Greetings of the day students. Welcome you all again in grammar class, online grammar class. We have taken a new subject in last lecture and that was model verb structure and uses. That was our first grammar class and today we are going to take it as a second part of it. But before that, we'll revise. So let's revise what we have done in our previous chapter. Will, shall, would, should, may, might, can, could, must, ought to, used to, dare, a need. They are modern auxiliary verbs that provide additional and specific meaning to the main verb of the sentence. These are the specific verbs which help us to make our sense or make our mood to be clear in the sentence. Now we will revise the sentence structure while using a model verb in different kind of sentences like positive, negative or interrogative what will be our sentence structure? First of all, we'll look at it in positive sentences. First of all, subject, model, verb, first form, then object. We should always remember that these model verbs are working as helping verb and after these helping verbs, we always use main verbs, first form. Now the next structure of negative sentence. First of all, subject, model, not. We have to add not here to make it negative. Then verb first form, then object. Next one is interrogative. For to make a sentence interrogative, we need to shift helping verb before subject so that's why we are going to shift model before subject first of all model then subject then again main verbs first form object and mark of interrogation so these were the sentence structure using model verb in a sentence now in previous chapter we have covered four models. They were will, shall, would, and should. Let's revise the uses of will first. Will is used to denote future action with third and second person. Second person and third person are you, they, he, she, it, name. And along with these subjects, we use will to denote only simple future action. To denote a determination with first person. First person are I and we. Here you have to note that in future tense we are using will with third and second person but we're taking it as a model we will use it with first person to specify these certain emotion or mood. Just like first of all it is determination. Second is to denote promise with first person. Again, we are going to use will to show promise with I and we. To denote threatening with first person. To denote willingness with first person. Will is not used with first person in interrogative sentences. In this situation, will is always used with second and third person. Here, be clear. To denote these emotions like determination, promise, threatening and willingness. We are using will with I and we or you can say with first person. But whenever we are using it in interrogative, we will not, we are not allowed to use it with first and second person. We are going to use it with only third and second person like you, they, he, she, it, name. Let's move to our next model that is uses of shell 
like will shall is also a helping verb of future tense and it is used with i and we so shall is used with first person to denote simple future action now here again like will to denote command here is a special mood or special emotion that is expressed by shall using with second and third person that is command to denote to denote promise with second and third person like command if you want to express promise we have to use it with second and third person to denote determination with second and third person to denote compulsion with second and third person shall is not used with third and second person in interrogative sentences in that case shall is always used with first person only like we have done in will so the same we have to follow in shall to express these certain emotions like command promise determination and compulsion we will use them with third and second person but whenever we are going to express or use it in interrogative sentence we are going to use it only with first person next move to our next use model that is uses of would first of all would is the past form of will and it is used in interrogative sorry it is used in indirect speech to denote past habit to express polite request to express wish to denote probability to denote past willingness to express preference what is used in unreal conditional sentences in main clause so these are the uses of would so these are the moods where which we can express by using would next let's move to our next model that is uses of should like would should is used as the past form of shall in indirect speech to denote moral obligation should is always used to denote moral obligation to denote duty to express advice to express past duty to express supposition in conditional sentences to express probability to express purpose or result so these were our uses of should and this is our rev rev revision of previous lecture now today we are going to take it further and we will learn the next uses of different different remaining models so today we will learn the uses of can could may might must used to ought to dare and need so students you need to focus here as would is the past form of will should is the past form of shall like the way could is the past form of can and may is the past form of may in indirect speech so let's move and learn their uses in sentences first of all you can see that i have uh, taken divided this page into two parts means we are going to learn next two models in comparison way like we are going to take a model which has its past form and we are going to learn the uses of those two models and they are can and could and i have taken it this way because not, uh, most of time they are they are they are used in similar way but there is a little bit difference so make it to make it clear i have 
taken this pattern. Let's start. To denote ability in present and future tense. So, this is the most common use of can. We can say that can is a model that shows ability or power in present and future tense. Look at the example. I can speak French fluently. So, means here the speaker is having the capability of speaking French fluently. Look at the code now to denote ability in past means they both can be used to show ability but the difference is that can is used in present and future tense and could is used in past forms past tense look at the example i could run 10 miles when i was young means he is talking about the past event and in this sentence you can see i can speak french fluently means still he is speaking french fluently let's move to the next use to express request in formal way informal there are two ways formal or informal informal means casual to express request in for informal way can you take me to the railway station so here code is also used to express request but it's a different kind of request it's a polite request to express polite request could you lock the door please and to make it polite we are using please at the last of the sentence so this this is the politest request to denote asking for permission in formal for formal way in casual way we can use can to take permission can i borrow your books book for some time so again here it is can is used to take permission and could is also used to take permission but the difference is the same like request this permission is in asking in polite way to denote asking for permission in polite way in formal way so this was informal and this is formal could i choose my own doctor to denote giving permission in present and future tense students you need to be listen this point very carefully because most many of you use can in a wrong way like taking permission from your seniors your teachers or from any official you are using can but it is wrong you can you can use it but in formal way when you are talking to your friends or you are uh, talking to a person equal to you mostly can is used for giving permission like whenever you are asking permission in a polite way you can get the permission in or you can give the permission to anybody you can take a holiday today to denote giving permission in past so there here is a difference like giving permission in present and future tense and here also it is used for giving permission but in past when i first started this job we could take a holiday when we wanted so you need to focus here he is talking about present and with the uses of these second form of the verb you can identify this is a, sent, a sentence of past tense to denote journal possibility like something or anything can happen anywhere so this is journal possibility everyone can make a mistake it's a normal thing to denote specific event to denote a specific event like the weather station said temperature could be as low as 10 degree celsius it's a specific event or possibility which has been uh, specified by a department now move to move to our next model that is may and might and as i have told you like will and would shall and should can and could may and might are their form in present and past like might is the past form of may now we will learn their uses by comparing them 
may is used to take permission now this is the very first form i uh, first rule i was talking about in can can is used to give permission and may is used to take permission and whenever you are talking to any official any senior any teacher or any any person who is uh, an officer or any person who is holding a designation and you wants to ask when you want to ask something you 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 should use may like may i use your phone mobile phone might to denote polite request and permission so may is used to take permission and might is used to take polite per request or permission might i ask ask a question so it is a polite request may is used to express possibility and uncertainty like the thing it is not cert certain or it is possible that it may happen we use may there like it is cloudy today it may rain so again you can see might is also used to show possibility but the difference is may is used to express strong possibility but might is used to express less possibility like my husband might come home next month means here she is not confirmed that his her husband is coming or not next month look here in the next use of may to express wish pray bless and curse to show optative sentences to express these feelings in optative sentences we should use may may you have a happy and long life this is a blessing here the next use of might might is used to in suppositional sentences started with i wish we wish he wish she wish as if as though if only and suppose so means what is the meaning of all these lines like might is used to express express suppositional sentences like in supposition condition we are going to use might and the sentence is starting with all these words if you work hard if you worked hard you might success so you can see if it is written and the sentence is starting with if in principal clause is in if if the principal clause is in present tense and subordinate clause starts with that so that in order that and express purpose then may is used in the subordinate clause here i worked hard so that i may succeed might is used as past form of may in indirect speech he said that he might come to the party like how you can identify that is it is indirect sentence said and they they will denote that the sentence is in indirect form may is also used to express surprise who may be there so all these were the uses of may and might now move to our next slide and next model now we will learn the uses of must must is used to express compulsion or strong moral obligation so students if you remember we had a line in should model that should is used to express moral obligation but here the difference is moral obligation and strong moral obligation in moral obligation if you don't follow or if you don't do that that's totally up to you that's a moral obligation on you but here you have to 
think about the condition and you have to do the task you have been given like or otherwise you will be penalized cars must not be parked in the front of the gate if you are going to park your cars in front of the gate of a mall or somewhere places or offices your cars will be fined or they will be towed to denote fixed determination i must have my money back like when you are very determined or fixed determined that you are going to do that thing or do that task there you will use must i must have my money back like you are so determined that you want your money back and you are not going to be convinced by anyone on any condition must is used in the sense of duty when uh, we have duty toward our nation <coughs> sorry when we have duty toward our nation toward our family then we should use must a soldier must fight for his country so this is our duty toward our nation everyone must do his duty like whatever duties we have toward society toward our families toward our nation toward our state toward uh, human kind we must do all those duties to express certainty we must win this match like whenever we want to show certainty like you people are very sure or we are very sure for some task we will use must there we must win this win this match your father must be nearly 70 now to express strong likelihood strong likelihood you must have heard about netaji subhash chandra bose like this is uh, most certain things that you must have heard about uh, these famous personalities or uh, any task that is more most certain to express inevitability inevitability means a thing which cannot be denied like we must all die one day sooner or later we all are a subject to death and we all must die so this was our must model now let's move toward our next model and the next model is ought to so students before starting ought to i would like to tell you one thing although i have mentioned it on this page like ought the uses of ought to and should are very similar look here now ought to is used to denote moral obligation desirability or duty so all these points we have already covered in should so this is the benefit of doing model exercise like one model can be used in many situation but that should be proper like we ought to love our country to express strong probability he ought to win the race like we can say this sentence like we he should win the race to express advice so do you remember that we have used the same line in should also to express advice you ought to read geeta you should read geeta so you can use both sent uh, both model there but you need to be careful if this question is asked in fill up and two is already given there like you dash to read geeta means the examiner wants you to fill only ought not should because then sentence will be you should to read geeta and that will be wrong so whenever two is there you are asked to fill ought only only to express logical necessity aditi ought not to be late so two is here so that's why ought otherwise we can say the sentence like aditi should not be late but in that condition two will not be there so this is the structure you will have to follow ought to plus have 
plus past participle means verb third form third form is used to express past obligation past obligation look at the sentence he ought to have worked hard so the sentence is following this pattern ought to have worked hard you might be wondering like i told you in the very starting that like in model we use only verb first form but students if we have sent have in the sentence then we will use verb third form only when we will have have ought not to have past participle verb third form is used to express disapproval look at the sentence we ought not to have laughed at her mistake again the note which i have not told you in the very beginning use use of should and ought to is very similar both can be used in all above condition so let's move to our next model and our next model is used to used to expresses past habit or situational situation in the sentence to express past habitual action we use used to he used to walk in the morning so means this was his past habit now he don't he doesn't she used to play ludo before her marriage she used to play when she was unmarried she used to play ludo but after her marriage she doesn't play ludo the next use of used to is used to expresses discontinued habit in the sentence i used to smoke cigarettes now i don't discontinued habit he used to walk he used to like i like i have written these sentences he used to walk in a positive way in a negative he used not to walk now in negative interrogative used he to walk so this was our very short model used to let's move to our next model and that is need as you can uh, identify what will be the meaning of need by its name only need means necessity need is used to express necessity as main verb in both singular and plural so now students this model and next one i'm going to explain you but there is a little difference like till now we have used model with verb first form but now need and dear they themselves are used as main verb they are model as well as main verb so in these two models need and dear we will use forms as or yes ed in these models only so they can be used as singular or plural see the example he needs my help like he needed my help we can write it like that he needed my help means need is itself is a verb of present tense by adding s or s and uh, by putting ed it become it becomes past form so look at the second example they need to go there like you can see with plural subject s or s is not there with he she it we use s or s that's why s is here in the first example he needs my help they need to go there i needed his permission to write this book so these were the uses of need now move to next model that is dear dear the meaning of word dare is to show courage being being courageous so dare is used to express to be courageous enough to do something it is used in both singular and plural form like need look at the example he dares to go there i dare to go there like i as is not there 
Pithi as is there. She dared to call me a fool. It is in the past form. That's why she dared, not dares. It can be also she dares, but it will be in present. But here I want to show you the past use of this verb. So that's why I've written she dared. He does not dare to reply me back. Means he does not have any courage to reply me back. I do not dare to argue with my fa father. Like I don't have any courage to argue with my father. So students, these were the uses of dare and does she dare to come there one more example is here does she dare to come here so with this our models are finished look at the one more example do you dare to face the situation so all these are examples or in this slide only one use is there so that's why i have used lots of examples to make it clear so these were our models. Thank you.